Okay, we know you love a UEFA explainer video on the channel, so here we are at 67 Hail Hail, bringing you more of what you want to watch. We're going to take a look at the UEFA Champions League and the proposed new format for the competition that's going to come in from 2024. It's a pretty radical change, so what is it? Who's leading it? And how could Celtic be affected? Now, these UEFA videos are pretty complicated by their very nature, so I'm not going to waste your time with a message on why you should subscribe to the channel, but, you know, by now, you should probably know what we're all about. But if you don't, well, to quote Celtic, it's not our problem. Okay, the way the Champions League works is they come up with rules for so-called cycles. Now, these cycles are usually three years, so they'll come up with some rules, we'll play the competition like that for a number of years, and then they'll decide to fine-tune the rules, change them, sometimes make them worse. Examples of new things UEFA brought in are the Champions route, which Celtic really haven't maximised over the years. But yeah, they, they come up with these rules and then they change things pretty much overnight for years to come. Okay, so what's changing in 2024? Well, we're looking at probably the most radical set of changes probably since the Champions League first came into existence in 1992. The 32-team group stage, which has been in operation for as long as I can remember watching football, is set to be axed from 2024 and it will be replaced by a totally new system. Now, the guy leading this is Andrea Agnelli, who is the chairman of the European Clubs Association. He also happens to be the chairman of Juventus, who got a pretty... Poor result in midweek, been knocked out by Porto at the Champions League last 16. Hard luck, mate. But he's the guy who is leading this from the ECA's point of view. He's set to come up with the finalised plans in the next couple of weeks that UEFA are then set to sign off. It's a battle between UEFA and the ECA and all this breakaway European Super League nonsense that threatens to ruin European football as far as I'm concerned. In terms of the actual format that's being discussed for the Champions League from 2024 onwards, this has been pioneered by Ajax Chief Executive Edwin van der Sar, you may remember who he was. He was last seen, I think, flying through the air after a Shinsuke Nakamura free kick. But he's managed to get over that disappointment and he's now working in the governance side of football. He's the chief executive of Ajax and he's come up with what they're calling the Swiss model for how the group stage of the Champions League will work. So this isn't complicated at all, as you would expect from UEFA. Rather than the nice simple system we have at the moment where we have eight groups of four making up 32 group stage teams, the new system will have four new teams, 36 team group stage, although there will no longer really be any groups, it's just a league now. There will be 36 teams who will be placed 1 to 36 in a league table, but don't worry, we're not each going to be playing every other team. The plan would be that each team would play 10 matches. Now, they'd play a selection of teams, so they'd play the best teams, the middle-ranking teams, and the lower-ranking teams. From there, the top eight teams in the overall league table after every match has been played would qualify for the last 16 of the Champions League, while teams ranked from 9th to 24th would then play off in a two-legged tie to join them. So that all makes some kind of sense. This is what's going to happen, by the way. This isn't just conjecture at this stage. These are the concrete plans that will probably be formalised by UEFA in the next couple of weeks. One part that hasn't been sorted yet, though, is where are the extra four places created by this new system going to go? Now, you would hope from Celtic and Scottish football's point of view that these four places would go to the champions of middle-ranking countries that don't already get their place in the group stage of the Champions League. So Scotland, Czech Republic, Ukraine, those kind of countries. That's what the European League's group is looking for. I believe they're made up of 30 separate European leagues and they want the middle ranking country champions to get automatic qualification to the Champions League group stage. But they are going to find a bit of resistance from probably the bigger clubs 
and countries in Europe who will want to see more places, yet more places, crazily given to the top league. So while England, Spain and Germany currently have four places in the Champions League, they could see that increased to five or maybe even six. There's even been chats about at least two of the additional four places being held as wild cards, basically giving UEFA the power to pick the final couple of teams to join the Champions League group stage. No matter how they've performed in their domestic league the previous campaign, it really would be the end of football as we know it if UEFA started to be able to just handpick what teams they want in the group stage. So four new teams in the Champions League from 2024, but there are no guarantees that Scotland would be given an automatic place or anything like that. One other thing I just wanted to quickly mention that shows how radical these proposals are, and Yelly has even mentioned the prospect of teams in the Champions League being forbidden from signing players from other teams in the Champions League. That's just crazy from my point of view. So I've not been able to find any actual figures with regards to how the money would increase for Celtic, but it's fair to assume that it would indeed increase by a hell of a lot. The main reason for that is the current Champions League model sees 125 matches played per season in the tournament proper. The new proposals, with all the additional games in the group stage and the additional kind of round of 32 qualifying, would see 225 games. So that's almost a 50% increase, more TV deals, more money for clubs like Celtic if we can get into the group stage. If we get there as well, we'd have five home games as opposed to the obvious current three. We'd also have two additional away games as well. We'd be able to sell to potential new signings, the prospect of playing 10 matches against elite opposition rather than just the current six. We'd have more sellouts at home. We'd have greater TV money. See, it's very positive if Celtic can find a way to get into this new setup on a semi-regular basis. It could be huge for the club and it could really emphasise the importance of winning the Scottish League title to really elevate as ahead of every other team in the country. Celtic will be well aware of this situation from 2024 and they actually rather bizarrely mentioned it in one of their many statements back in Neil Lennon at the start of February. It was the one Ian Bankier sent out addressed to supporters and in a strange part of it he did mention the new UEFA setup saying equally there are opportunities ahead of us as the structure of European competitions evolves over the next three to five years. Amongst other things we will be considering how to take full advantage of what comes our way. There's no mention of the UEFA Europa League and the UEFA Conference and how they could be affected by the changes from 2024. I would assume both of those would be staying pretty similar to what they will be from next season onwards. Equally, there's no mention of qualification to the Champions League. But the final thing I wanted to mention was some interesting comments by Agnelli that probably give us an indication into how football is going to work going forward in terms of the split between European football and domestic football. I would say up until this point, domestic football is probably made up about 80%, maybe more, of most teams' seasons with the rest spent in Europe, if at all, obviously, only a select few teams do play in Europe. But Agnelli has actually said that the new formula for how it will work will effectively be two-thirds of your season domestic football and one-third European football. You could argue Celtic have probably had that in recent seasons with the amount of qualifiers we've had to play to even get into group stage football. But that is what we're heading for. I just wonder how the League Cup will be affected in Scotland going forward, whether Celtic will still feel they should and can compete in all those extra matches, whether they may feel that the extra European matches could mean that they no longer should compete in that competition. So that's one to watch. The days of trebles could be over forever, but I think if we're getting an opportunity to play more European matches against the elite opposition and giving us a greater attraction to be able to sign top players or so-called top players, then I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. If Celtic could find a way to get into this new European setup with the Champions League on some sort of semi-regular basis, then we really could be elevated ahead of any other club in Scotland. It's an opportunity there for a lot of teams. You would be playing 10 games against the best teams in Europe. It would just add so much to our season. 
But obviously the flip side is that arrivals across the city will be eyeing up the exact same prize. And with UEFA money set to grow from 2024, the advantages of winning the league will be more profound than ever. We really need to get back to the position where we're the dominant team in Scotland because if we manage to do that for the next three or four years, we could well be heading for another nine in a row.